Okay, so hello. Um, glad you're here. Basically, I'm telling a kind of history of someone that's doing crazy things and people don't understand why. It's revival mode software. It's um, not an easy thing, but at the same time, actually, it's a doable thing with less effort and with lot of people. I've been doing this for a long, long, long time. I didn't knew that until I realized it made this. And my whole idea is to show to you exactly what you actually can do and how you can do to achieve these things. The simple steps there, but uh, this kind of more dedicated work. It's nothing like special, but it's the way we do that actually. So, to say to me this, I'm being long time KD developer, open source, other things, DJ, electronic music, he used to be a rave DJ for a long time ago. And uh, for some reason I passed it for several industries. I come from Linux distributions in the, in the past to IO, before IO industry, then mobile industry and Nokia and audio industry again, and then the, now I end up in the car industry, auto industry. I don't know why, but it's that. I don't know it's next one, maybe in five years, but it's still easy to do. And basically, I pass for all possible kind of software that comes from Unix and if some Windows, and codes for whatever you want, and coding or whatever, it's like, I'm basically a level engineer. I pick pieces and build together. There's pieces that models, or wrote it. So basically, I don't know what they wrote and how they wrote, but they need to put together. And then, why? And this, is, this is the first question that I first say that why they made KD1 and K21 running on the... But the reason was behind the KD 20 years development, uh, because 20 years after KD, we need to show something interesting. So I decided to make this to launch KD1 again 20 years later in the modern systems. This machine, just to check, uh, to check, is a Fedora 27, pretty much the latest machine, running with the clan and other things. And the reason why is not only the 20 years. There's a question that I made for you. Why we have museums? So please answer the questions. Anyone we know why we have museums? To learn our history. Yes, exactly, to learn our history. And then actually, what people do in museums? It's not simply, they don't just put the history there. They have people that work on the restoration, catalog, <coughs> and other things. We actually have this, uh, doesn't do that with software. There's a several projects around the world, mostly started by video console and video game people, to actually restore all the things that come in from the past. It's not the only compiler, but try to make it work. It, if you imagine, for example, Atari is a very easy example for that, because everyone likes and loves Atari for the past, so easy. But who remembers here TurboGrafx-16? Who had this console? Yes, right, but actually there's some really good games and that stuck in the past. Nobody sells anymore, nobody has the original cartridge. Most people that bought at the time was holding there. So the people started to actually collect drones, made emulators and tried to make possible everything available because it's our history. That's the great thing. And we are not doing exactly the same thing with the open source software. We have an advantage at this point. That this, right now, we have the source code. Which, but people would that coming now, open source is changing the pace right now, and then people is forgetting about the past. Okay, you say, I know you have new versions of everything, yes, but then before people don't know how it is. So, that's another practical reason beyond that. Before I start that, it should be easy for everyone, what's the first answer? Okay, I want to run old software, what's the first answer that everyone do? Come on. Huh? Yes, virtualization. That's very really pretty easy. And means like, for example, let's try to actually use an, uh, a, a very old version of Windows to run a specific software. It's easy, right? Everyone can get a pirate version or someone. But the licensing is not valid anymore. Doesn't the actual? You, it's very hard. So you need to do actually some illegal things in this case. 
If you had a source code to run there, it would be different. But forget about virtualization, it would work. And be easy job, everyone can do, everyone actually can do. Just need to know how to install all the Linux. Very easy, for example, if you pick a Debian for 20 years ago, everyone knows how to start today. Just try to pick these people who start Linux today and try to make start Debian. So it's still not easy even with the virtualization. So, the, but the real question is several. Can you imagine which other reasons that you want to revive old software? And uh, talking about the commercial point of view. So basically, imagine banks. We have tons of tons of bank applications that actually doesn't have um, modern versions. They're still running on old systems, and the systems are becoming rotten. Uh, the data structures and other things were created inside the bank. We need in some way to at least support for the new applications to have the access of data structures and other things. And really, you want uh, the bank who spend ages for people rewrite the software, how you can guarantee that someone that's rewriting software that 30 years ago there, nobody can guarantee that. So we actually, we have the idea of picking this old code, put it in a new machine, and running there to at least have the data, and you can use this data for a new application, or even make it work in a new machine with minimal effort, minimal cost, and prolong the life of software because banks don't like to change in anything. Or, or, for example, let's imagine that governments are using computers for a long, 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 long time, using several kinds, it's a DOS applications, it's even COBOL applications, and this data structures that are there, it's not simple, simply look at the code, imagine, oh, this is how the data is there, but you don't know how the software performs on top of the code, even if you have the data. So you need the original software to actually be ported and running to actually see how the data is there. So this is actually several valid reasons to actually use the old code. It's not our archaeological is my one in the, in the facts. But then, this is where I started. I was thinking about why I'm doing these things, not only the archaeological part of KD 20 years. It's just a result of things that I'm doing really a long time. It started really here. I don't know if you can see clear on that. There's a text here. The, time, the date is actually for the first year of Revolution 2002. This is the first ATM running on Linux in the world. Yes, I was just out of university and I, is, I was working in the oil, with the graphic interfaces for the oil company there. And then I received an invite for Connectiva, that's a Linux company a long time. They say, yeah, uh, I saw your CV, you want to actually work in a project uh, there as a test period to work there. I say, okay, I always want to work in full Linux time, but I was young, I knew about MS-DOS, I knew about something in Linux, and completely naive what where I'm into. But I decided to jump there, and then we made this port for the first port, it's, it's 2001, the first actually port of Linux. Why is made? We actually have the original C code, MS DOS code for XT, long time running in the bank, and the request of the bank says, We have the machines, we have the company producing the ATMs, we can provide the drivers, but I want exactly the same thing running. It's a token, so in my Naive way, I go after that and start to look around and discover that. At that time, Qt is very incipient, GTK is unusable, so everything was made on X11. And this, I need to actually discover everything during the part of project. It's like the pilot was a crazy thing, That's this is possible. So it's just running. It's running until, I think, two years ago, that's after 12 years, same code running, and then they change it for a new uh, the modern interface. But it's working. So this was the first real ATM running from top to bottom Linux and open source. Open source huh? because the part is connected. What's easy in the point that is the client is not is not full server code with the server was running Kobo and other parts. So it makes easy this connection inside. But this was 2001. It's meaning it was 17 years ago there. And that's just a quick history about that. 
But the first day that we are about to show for the managers the first uh, prototype, let's say how it's working, it's already working and everything, I decided to put on that top with the, the type there, the logo of Connectivo, the company, and they put the stacks embossed on the other side. And it goes, all the managers and, uh, and the president of the bank like, like it, everything, it's fine there. But they say, oh, but uh, the, we need to take away the logo of the company there. They never said anything about the tax. So it has been 12 years, this actually was running with the tax, the more important. <laughs> and actually, this is, this is a picture from John and of how it's with a real one working there. So basically, this is the whole thing. So, in, Indirectly, I started the whole thing about porting old software for new machines in this way. But then it comes fails. At the same point, two years later, we have a comp a, a, another financial company that has uh, a, a complete uh, uh, stock, a stock market application. They use it there. It was written on a visual age, an IBM C++ uh, library that's similar at the time with the MFC or visual objects. And the documentation was very, very good. I was not in the lead of the project, I was in the group that the three guys are doing. And then exactly, this is an example of failures there. What's happening? This is a Windows application, and then we have the visual age, and nothing actually was Linux there. We have uh, our open source in general. We have the code for the, um, the application itself, we have the, the code of ISO H because it's, at some point we have it there. The question is, okay, let's start to work in that. So people start, they decided to go around and say, let's work on this, let's compile it against, against, against the current uh, graphic libraries. And then someone said, no, 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 it's too difficult. Let's, uh, it's already a month late on the idea of prototype and say, no, no, this is not working, we've never been done there. Let's, uh, let's go and try wine. And using wine and running the Windows application, no, no, was the completely failure. Was the doom of the project was there. Because exactly, wine was not ready. We did not have control. Any kind of the, uh, the behavior of wine is too huge to control there. And I will say about uh, how it's supposed to be done. But this was like the problem that the way that you decide, try to decide things during the project. You don't, uh, you're not set up the projects there. Um, okay, so we And this, after, some years later, we applied the same idea technology, but for current projects. When I was at Nokia, the, the first assignment that we had, it, they had the problem with current N9. Who remembers the Nokia N9? Yeah? So the N9 was basically Linux phone. Uh, and uh, they have uh, problems with the current uh, interface, with Qt interface, because the whole set of libraries was too slow, and we need, actually, I was doing performance Qt uh, analysis, so we need at some point to run in the current hardware to see what's happening there, so, but uh, we need to test exactly the same code. I was not, it was, I could rewrite the code, otherwise the test is not valid. So I picked exactly the same ways that I'm doing things, separated the code, just compiled for that, and just put exactly the libraries, the different level of libraries that I need to test on the things. So we made uh, three different releases of the same thing to testing, using the same code, but different libraries just adapting the same way too. So basically the same technique is, is valid for other cases. And then, the lesson we learned, this is, I call it a bonker stick guide, because this, it's really, a tip guy there. So, give some slack. This is the perfect. Your project needs time to play before it started. And even if you consider this time of project, you need it to do whatever you want. You know that moment that you need to fly on YouTube and your, your manager say, to, what are you doing? You should do in the project. No, no, you need actually the YouTube time, other things. But this is meaning the cold time. Why? Because we start before the start. That's uh, why I'm saying this. Because you get to do all the new things that first rules about. First, you need to see what the old software do. Then you can come to virtual machines. You need to see how the software is installed. You see how is 
the software is exactly behaving inside the file system and you need to see what the software actually do because most of the time people that do its job actually don't know what the software do. We need to learn things. Yes, this is the first thing. You will learn new things and you need to learn new things. So we need to get the old one before you get to the new and understand what you're doing. So basically, if you don't know exactly what you do in there, you need time to learn. If you start a project, okay, let's do an things, and you don't understand what you're doing, you fail. Sorry, that's uh, or, or you take time or people will try some money and then make the, the stupid mistake of, oh, we need more developers and then make everything chaotic and also work. So this, you should consider that you have two projects. The first one is, people call it prototype or whatever, it's not a prototype. It's actually the time that you need to learn and understand. It's not even that you go to a training to understand things. Actually, it's your time to do in that. You don't need to be everyone, but just the ones that actually touch the real code. The second thing, nothing is sacred but the code. Because it's obvious. It's you are doing the poor thing for this. You're not doing the everything. So, the beauty in the pain of build system. First of all, it's my first rule. The build system needs to go. It's still old. It's, everyone knows that build systems are becoming like all the things that people say is very difficult to write, it's very difficult to do, except for make, that is the same syntax. It's hard as hell. It's everything become old. Who, who today uses auto tools? Sometimes. Sometimes, yeah, okay, this is you. Yeah. Uh, auto tools, yeah, it is. and or for example, uh, let's see. Oh, okay, let's go. Who is still using SVN for new projects right now, or auto tools for new projects? Let's see. That's it. And then people will say that oh, okay, what are you using right now? Okay. Huh? No, no, Git. Yes, but but for build system. Yeah. See, yes, but now we're talking about people using start to using Bazel inside the big companies that uh, it's not ready but people say is the next next big sheet is good for integrators but it's not good for the developers in general i can say this for reason and this new build system come from gnome etc uh, first of all you don't need to be the major expert in the build system that you choose to use that. You need to understand the build system, that's it. Why you don't need to be a major expert? Because this, this kind of project is one single shot. It's not getting the upgraded, we're not getting the flight. So you need to do exactly what you need. Oh, in my case, specific for the, for the KDE Qt, I need to deal with old make uh, file styles, I need to do it auto tools, and I need to kill make for the side of Qt. So, I knew pretty well most of them because I used to work with was easy in my part. So, so what I did is actually create a very hackish script that actually parsing all the things to generate the basic make that I needed. And then I can tweak. So 90% of my work I just did automatic. And then I just tweaked exactly the parts that I needed to understand. But this is an important thing there. Was two steps. The first one I compiled it. The second one I real make it useful. Because uh, this, uh, where people stop uh, usually is like, okay, this compiling is amazing too. No, it's not done. Because now you can understand that you compile and everything, go back and then do it properly. Then you can see the results. Then, run from the mainstream effect. It's the fact that this is very known to open source people and you should actually avoid. We always want the next big thing. We come at oh nice, everyone is using this is the next great good system, great tool, let's use it for the new project. No, no, we are not doing these things. It's okay for your new project, it's an infant. We need something actually stable and have some knowledge because you will meet at some point some blocks that you need answers and to talk everywhere. If you get a very, very first new thing that could be amazing, it could be completely no, you don't have any proper answers right now. You don't have time to actually do a proper application and at the same time asking to discover things. No, there's not time for that. Uh, 
Paris looks at the past. This is one of the important things. You push the results out of your, every single build of time with exactly what happened in the past. So you know one on one that's exactly in the build system way that, okay, this works before, not working right now. Oh, but this library file or this module file is, is different. And the system is now looking in different places. That's it. So all you need to. So, not being a hero. Never. This is another problem with open source developers. I did mean that before, and you, I have my fault parts. It's like, there are dependencies on every application, there are dependencies. You depend on libraries. If you think really about the most basic dependence on Linux is the, is the libc or glibc, remember that. So, you're doing one software, and why I'm saying that? What is the first thing that when a new developer or a, a common initially started open source developer do? Guess. You are doing a software that you port in the software. What, what do the, the guy think about? Do you have dependencies? What the guy will do? Come on. He will redo the dependencies inside the project. Yes, exactly. That's uh, that, uh, one of the things, and uh, the other things is like actually try to to build the old dependencies, everything. Let's okay, let's build everything in the new. No, 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 no. So you never do that. It's like uh, there's a big chance of dependencies exist in a modern way. So uh, before try to do a crazy things and rebuild thousands of software, you need just one software. And it's still one shot. We're not going to further things on the moment. We need this for specific reasons. So we not update any kind of dependency. We just update only if needed, if it doesn't exist. And then wrapping is a choice. This is actually the proper solution for the project that fails that we did. If at that time, instead of doing completely trying to go to wine or crazy solutions like that. We actually wrap it only the calls or the functions, graphic functions of visual age and put in a library. For example, it was C++. At that time, it was feasible using Qt. So we do it exactly like a visual age Qt class that wrapping the functions to code. And people say, oh, but it's too much. No, it's not because your application is not calling all the 500 functions of, of visual wage. It's calling 100, less than that. We don't need to do everything. So the actually difficult work will be just actually wrapping the signals or how it calls. So you reduce your amount of code of almost nothing comparing that. You don't touch the code, original code. You don't touch the library that is bigger, but actually you have a wrapper and just make the proper things. And this will make it proper right. So the, the five persons work on that project, we probably need two or three to make the things work. But it failed the time. It's just because you don't know how to do it. Also, did it mention that everything is sacred but the codes? So compiler. How much things you did you try to compile old software with modern things like GCC7 or Clang? And what is the first thing that happens? Uh, Syntax error. Huh? Yeah, this is fails, but it's, it, it's you look for the, the amount of things that compiler detects right now, of warning, other things that we didn't imagine that exist code. So basically, uh, this is starting to become difficult because you need to understand that this is warnings are valid or there's a reason to exist on that code. Yeah. Spring, uh, spring huh? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is basically, yeah, your code is old and you'll be tempted to make your compiler behave like old. No, we start from the very, very top of what compiler provided right now. It's like, for example, you go and say to compiler, oh, your compiler C++ things are going to C++ 14. Let the compiler do C++ things. Because it's, it's supposed to, so, uh, to actually perform to have all the base C++ 98 until there. And you start to see the files. If there if is a simple code that we can change it, they will change it and continue. If there's something that's actually explicit for C90, then you start to slow down your, comp 
your compiler to put exactly the what you want. So this is, you need to actually guarantee that it compiles with the most recent stack to guarantee that he decides that you run. There will be a nice set of effects when you not do that. And avoid it. Avoid it all the time. Try to fix this, everything and create a compiler. So about warning in the universe. That's it. That's the temptation. Everyone does say, oh, there's a warning in my software. Let's fix it, right? No. No, no, no. Then, no. Oops. Let's say, uh, I think it needs something around. Let's go back to the talk. Go back. Mm -hmm. Errors are fine. We need to fix the errors. That's the thing. This is an obvious thing. So, care for bits. There's this, uh, a dichotomy on this wall. I'm talking about care for bits in like pieces that you're looking for, and bits like uh, you're talking about software that was made for 8 bits, 60 bits, 32 bits, and you have compiled it with a 64 compiler and a 64 machine. So, this, you know, that's something that's so very uh, nice things happen when you actually say the compiler, oh, optimize everything for me. With, uh, yeah, go ahead and see how your structure works. Warnings? No, 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 no. Why? Because unless you are very strict to have, oh, this warning says that this if is not uh, properly placed, uh, that uh, declaration inside, uh, inside my enum at that time says that it's not to use it, and the compiler is not magic. They don't know exactly if you use it exactly in C++ and C code or other things. So you don't know exactly the behavior. So if it's a warning, keep that way unless something happens. All these things not work properly should be dealt after when you test. When you have the first thing, I will show it to you exactly when we kind of this behavior. And then we're done here. So, I will try to show to you uh, something. Let's actually make it. Try to let duplicate this uh, display to to make it properly. Uh, display, okay. I, I don't think I can do a copy for this. Uh, it's okay. There we go. So here we are in the panel machine, and then I will show to you exactly, this is a very fast compilation because, for example, Qt is not that big. I will go to, yes, people say Qt is not that big today, <laughs> but today is a okay. so, two hours or something. <laughs> yeah, at that, that time it was four hours to compile Qt. That's, so I go into completely clean the things. Let's find this compiler, so let's kill a birthday. And that's it. Uh, so it's uh, some kind of cache, but and I can say to, you know, let's say to you, let's show that's what it's doing right now. It's using Clang here yeah, and using full Qt. So it's basically finished. This is this exactly 15 years old code with almost no changes uh, and the decision that they changed so that is going 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 it's almost there so you see that's machine is compiling q2 yeah so it's okay it's compiling it's working let's see uh, i'm compiling with the error path so i don't need to care actually about uh, where the position of libraries and this is uh, this is more strict thing so this is everything happening then, fine, come on. Mm, okay, so not 97, 98, 99. <coughs> this is, of course, this is in C cache, but uh, it takes another 15 minutes to compile this one. So it's not that big. This is an old laptop of seven years old already. So let's see, uh, go to examples and widgets. Let's go to C. And here we go, I don't have the GIF here, but it doesn't matter. 
And here you go. This is Q2, basically running on the on this new, brand new Fedora with KD. So, okay, that's fine. And you say, perfect, I did it, it's working. And remember that I talked about before, so about, and you see the things after, when the testing things. Let's see these details, let's see if you, want to, if you know what's happening. One of the very known applications for the Qt at that time is called a Qt Designer. Everyone using to do um, to do graphics, uh, dialogues, other things on Qt Designer. So let's run the designer. Okay, designer. Let's see what's happening now. Don't you see something strange? <laughs> okay, it's, I give like one minute for you to discover what's happening right now. It's, uh, remember, it's 15 years old. Come on, no one will guess the things. Wayland? <laughs> no, I'm not using Wayland. This okay. is pretty X. No Wayland related code here. It's not, we're not even compiling the Wayland now. This is running on pure X, a standard application. And you see that the widget's application works perfectly. Why is this happening right now? Is it an X embed? What? Is it X embed? Yes, it's an X server, of course. Not it's X embed. No, no, it's not an embedded at all. It's a full Linux running X work. Come on, guess. Overflow? Mm, yeah, okay, you can think about this, but it's not exactly like that. I'm You're getting here. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the current screen being too big. Too no, 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 just not. It's not that related. It's perfectly, for the, for the side of X, X, everything is perfect. And if you click, for example, let's show to you, if I click on something here, I can, the application is working properly. But for some round, it's not there. Come on, 30 seconds. What? So, so, wait, 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 wait. What's it? it hasn't submitted the final draw as a finished buffer. Okay, not yet, but almost there. Okay, sorry, no? Is it an issue with 64, 32 bits and in the graphic display? No, that's not it. Maybe something about bit depth? De yes, you got that. Um, but it's not exactly bit depth, but uh, uh, there's something that's very interesting. We don't have a RGB visuals of that time. It doesn't exist. The video cards were pretty much clustering. We are in a very early stage. So basically, we don't have transparency bit in the new structure. For this, they actually don't recognize the transparency bits of that. So what happens and then when we run like this? Because X people notice that and have resources. So uh, let's see what's uh, let's see. Uh, what happens right now? <laughs> it's basically we just say to skip the depth beef bit and using that. And okay, the, then my question is, should I put this exactly in the Qt code? Yes, I could actually put it initializing the code of the graphics there and fix there. But no, then you broke exactly the, the library. I don't know what res results will be. It will be perfect, yes, it's this application will be running, yes. Do I know the other side effects to introduce this in the original code? No, I don't know, and I really don't want to know. So unless it's really necessary, this is for proper solutions that you're looking for. So, if you see that's really functional, I can just create a new dialog. Let's go to the wizard, famous thing, and then you can create whatever things we want. Add a page on the wizard and back, or create a standard dialog. The whole old times, that's really awful. And you see this, look, look this. Can you see something here? Yeah, this is push button and things, yes. Why is not, that's the second guess, why is not shown there properly? This is a very simple question. I, this is, I, I talk it about uh, very, in the very beginning of the, of the talk. It's just, I say, compare the current state of the old, with the old state. 
This is just because the bitmaps are not in the proper place where they're looking for. If, it's, if you look at before and they are installed in the proper place and running for the proper place, this will be there. But right now, it's even you need to consider that application actually are not looking for that. They are assuming by default at that time that the fact that the bitmap doesn't install, doesn't matter, it happens. So it's, then at that part we come to GDP and that, see, look, exactly the situation. If you not compare it with the original deployment, it's just deployment, it's files, we don't need to. What exactly will you will do on this? Open GDB, start to run in there, S trace to look at the pointers there, and like wasting a lot of time to do it the debugging when actually you don't need it. You just need to look at the file list of there. So this is exactly a simple thing. So pretty much yes, exactly what I wanted to say to you. And this code is all in GitHub, of course, uh, or the KD repository. The new, the second version, I actually did three times Kit one because I started Kit one then I updated for KD one and then I looked at that could be improved, and I go to K Q2, and then KD two, and then I look, okay, this is very nice approach, and then I go back to Kit one and remain again everything. So it's not a single part. It's like how to improve the, even this process there. And okay, so um, uh, let's see. I still have a talk on my mind. Oh, yeah. So my last slide is this one. Okay, this is pretty. Uh, it's pretty much crashing. <laughs> yeah, come on. Okay. This is. But pretty much thanks that you spend the time. That's in Sunday, really. <laughs> and I, you can, can contact me with any of these emails. Or if you're really looking for a job, just contact me and talk about BMW. We are looking for Linux and open source developers there. And they're great. Too. Everyone is hiring, but we are hiring too. <laughs> if you want to work in lovely Germany, that's it. Okay. <laughs> so, okay, that's what I have to talk to you about. And Please, questions. Yeah. Can you fire up KDE 1 or? Uh, yeah, I don't have in this machine because it's actually a the machine or what. But technically, yes, I could, uh, you can actually use it. Uh, there's uh, some restrictions because the file uh, access archive is kind of different structures there. But yes, it works properly. Yeah. Anyone else? Uh, how does it compare the it's impossible to compare the speed. At that time, it takes like five to ten seconds to run up an application. We had to have this five, six memory. Right now, it's compiled with Clang, and this is like the compilation sometimes is faster than some applications running at that time. It's impossible, it's impossible to compare. It's, it's blazingly fast. Um, there's actually people asking me when they made it if I could make a full distro using that, actually to use this stable, or even develop new software on top of that. I say, no, no, <laughs> this is, no, this is, people are really crazy on that, so, but it's really fast. But um, and in terms of uh, usability, we have, rest, we have restrictions on how to use it and why to use it, that's it. Uh, yeah. But basically, yes, it's way, way faster than that. That's, uh, and, uh, a point of view, it was people really nice to see things like old K office running. Just something that people don't remember that KD is a full office compliant thing. That's that's yeah. renamed to Kaliningrad. Well, this is the, the whole story behind this song. Cause like it's started, it, everything ended up with uh, Nokia falls to to. Microsoft, and then you know what happened, but it's basically that uh, it's very important point in the open source uh, timing when the, the this uh, was like split of things in the open source world when the Nokia falls. It's uh, affected very a lot of things there, and this is actually what happens on Caligra itself. Caligra was the one thing that was aiming for this, and then we changed for Microsoft, and we lost the track. In the it's the whole uh, infrastructure for KDEs was taking a very big hit because the difference of Qt go threatened. But at least now Qt is GPLv3, so that's 
a good thing, I guess. No, not for the industry. That's the bad part. But for us users, it's really good. No, no. For users, yes. As long as we keep using this. Is uh, and in terms of users, yes, it's perfect, and we can actually keep free, free uh, environment for everything. Yeah. It's one long time. We, in the side of KDE, we have an of official agreement under the German law. Let's call it KDE Free Qt Agreement. If something happens with Qt company in general, the code will become uh, licensed in GPL two or three automatically and we become uh, we become actually signers of the code so we guarantee that at least for the future that we queue to be free doesn't matter what happens it's nobody can uh, can close the cute com uh, the cute co code mm -hmm. in this term of freedom yes and the the, the only uh, complexity with that is uh, how you deal with companies there are several companies is cute is perfect right now the automobile industry is a lot of cute and so this, until that is guarantees some life of Qt, but uh, we're talking about uh, using a user space and this is kind of a um, grey situation right now, I think. So, uh, okay, there, there, there. Just, just a question. So, do you think that this way of taking your own software and compiling it on a modern platform, is it like, could be seen as a way of learning software development? Um, yes, but you need to be really careful about that because uh, then it's a, if you can go and you actually knows what you're doing about for banks is my first say to, things to say. But we're talking about huge companies like oil companies or and even in the automobile industry that we're using tools that for a long time. In this case, we're talking about safety related software. You need control there. So it's yes, but it's not a thing that you can do automatically. It's you, I personally think that if someone uh, go on board of these things, we will have a, a huge market for that. But it's not a simple thing. It's like you need to worry with more things than usual. Even more, if you're thinking about uh, using software that is in production right now, you want to just change it. So, but yes, it's uh, we will need it at some point doing that. And even people say, no, AI will do that. No, it's not. Because actually it's not the thing that we can simply put someone, some AI to take it and that's right. Yeah. This, but this, remember, this is different from porting software. Like, oh, I have the software for Windows. I want to make it version on the, there. It completely changed. Like they do, for example, today with video games, that you have uh, remade the code for from PlayStation to PS4. Other things. It's a, it's a middle uh, between the full porting and using an emulator. That's the thing. Okay. Do you think you need to s this skip to a virtualization in the future, or do you think you can maintain this going forward with modern or modern hardware? Uh, not at all. This is a different thing. It's like in my in my first approach of this is about archaeology. Really, I can I want to keep the software running. It's part of my life. I started with KDE one and. Uh, but uh, in general, we, this should be made just to guarantee that actually have the flow of data not lost on, the, on our things that we can't recover anymore and guarantee that data that we from the new applications can use it or pass back in this data for a new model of things. But uh, no, we, we, we don't have a skip virtualization. Actually, the world works on virtualization today. That's, uh, uh, I think we've gone even further. We can, we can have several hypervisors like we're running things that we don't know exactly anymore what's running on top. It's not a single server. But this, this is basically a thing that you can... If you want... Back into your question. If you go to this thing and a company you want to revive it, well, they will pay a lot of money for you. Yes. But you, get, you know that the risk of failure is very high. Because it's actually you are jumping in a place that actually you don't know yet. You need to study a thing that doesn't matter if you know. It doesn't matter which language you're using. Doesn't matter. You just don't know. They are, you just started with some things that are written by like 100, 200 persons. In the case of Qt and KDE, it's 1,000 persons. And you never look for the code. You need to look for the code of everyone and then doing this. It's not that simple. So. As long as you are courageous to do that, it's okay. Actually, like, I learned uh, a lot. I did something similar. Uh, I 
uh, compile the Firefox 3.6 onto a modern hardware and yeah. modern compiler. Now we have Firefox 58 or something. Yeah. But if you look back into the old Firefox code, you can learn a lot about how the browser actually works. Exactly. Uh, as a learning point, I think yeah, no, the, the learning point is perfect. I agree with you. For example, actually, if I wasn't a teacher in university, I will push exactly the problem for the ARGB for the students to understand exactly what's the difference between uh, the the CBT or not in the video graphics. Okay. So this is at some point, and I, more than that, I will use that with uh, for all defects to push them discover which defect is happening with the new order. So this a term, uh, this learning point is perfect. It's one of the uses. I agree with you. Okay. I guess you would never dare to, if a company will come to ask you, can you port this software to modern hardware, do it on a fixed price, so you would never... No, 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 we not do it fixed price. Right? No, no. Okay, if you're looking for, for my, my case, if I was at like time, I was working for myself in a BMW right now, I probably I would do it in, in this way. Uh, you ask them to pay for a fixed price for the, the study and prototype, right? And says it's like they uh, I will take a risk they will take a risk too for that and they want to pay to see that it's viable or not uh, then it will be like this lap time that I say after that we can guarantee that I go go for it but uh, and this uh, talking we're talking basically of course in open source conference but this is valid of even uh, closer softwares that actually you have access when the company hires you or it doesn't matter because even uh, build systems like uh, one that's come from MSVC or Borland uh, still have uh, a way to destruct them and you need to queue and understand them so this basically the, the, the tips are valid for everything the most important thing that we you knew that you learn new things is and, and the most fun things you knew that you learn new things that are really old that you're not using anymore so this is so it's really think you spend your time of life to learn, learn a thing that's not used anymore so you really become an archaeologist <laughs> you are polishing things on the museum restoring things there Now, when you are trying it, you thought, oh, it's actually better, like how it was once than nowadays. Well, so much, uh, if you talk like this, it's not about the code, but it's about the community. It was different times. I mean, something about, I don't know, functionality or the user interface? No, it's, it's just evolved. Things evolve. It's like we grow up, we do things differently, things happen differently right now. It's, it's what is, for example, for me, it was more fun at the time. I was young, I was doing new things, and I was, I was really interested on this kind of things. And today I'm looking for more, I've been working for a long time in history, I know exactly how things work. And I understand that this looks like a task that I want to do, but more a job, personal job, than actually the fun. So, and the whole ecosystem of open source changed a little bit, and with, with, we trying to get people to having fun to doing code anymore. But the mind is oriented like we created startups, I want to work at these things and then I want to get money on the things because we become the, uh, the industry that give money for your future, not anymore some new things. Like it's computer science become the medicine or lawyer for the future. So that's why. So this people come with different mind. It's, we just need to uh, adapt for this. It's same same thing with the code. And there's several smartest strategies at that time that even if you use them today, it's like not adapt for this. So it's really good, it's really great. was made it right at that time, but right now, no. Oh, I was tempted a lot when they're doing that, on KDE2 in specific, to look at this code, okay, I can change this, and see, and I was like craving to do that. I said, no, no, no. This is uh, happened there. Yeah, like, but Sometimes in the future, maybe some crazy people pick there and create a KD 2.5 and uh, <laughs> that was, uh, it will not be me. Sorry. Okay, then. Yeah. I think everything. If, if you want to talk to me later, I'll be around it, and tomorrow too. So, thanks.